just as we thought. That's the landing craft from the Pentagirl. Damn, look at all these creepy-ass flowers. And over there, just the ladies we thought we'd see. Muse. And Principal Aurelia. Oh, you finally arrived. My young horned lions. Welcome, Thor's Branch Campus's Class 7 Special Operations. My name is Mildine. Mildine Yuzalith de Cayenne. I am heiress to the Cayenne Duchy and sponsor of the Viceland Army. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance at last. Our acquaintance? Hmm. A new introduction for your new identity, is that it? Oh, Yuna. You'll have to forgive me for hiding the truth from you. Muse was an old nickname of sorts. One my parents gave me before they passed. After the accident, however... Their duchy was inherited by my uncle Croy. No sooner had he taken his seat as the new Duke Cayenne, than I was shipped off to Heimdall, out of sight and out of mind. There, I spent close to a decade as a student at St. Astraea, all the while knowing that my uncle's actions would one day lead to civil war. What? That's impossible. You're saying that as a little kid, you knew there was going to be a civil war? It only made sense. I could see what my uncle would make of House Cayenne's assets. The machinations of the other four great houses and the Reinford group as well. The Empire's relationships with Crossbell and the Republic. The Blood and Iron Chancellor's plots. Excluding supernatural elements, such as the Society and the Divine Knights. All of these factors allowed me to predict that the Noble Alliance would move to suppress the Reformist faction by force. And that it would all lead to Duke Cayenne's to my Uncle Croy's inevitable downfall. If you were anyone else, I'd think that was a bluff. Lady Mildine contacted me right at the close of the Civil War. As an ally of Count Egret, I'd known of her since she was a child. When she predicted every twist and turn of the Northern War, right down to the Empire's proposal, I made up my mind. I would see Lady Mildine as the next head of House Cayenne. Not that sham of a man, Marcus Ballard. Though I must admit to this day, I find both her ambition and the accuracy of her predictions intimidating. For instance, she sought contact with the Witch of Ouroboros to bolster her list of allies. And by the end of last year, she had foreseen the National Mobilization Law, the war with Calvert, and even the curse overtaking the Empire. Last year? Damn, she's like some kind of monster. What's going on? Hmm. Something tells me this isn't clairvoyance. I merely look at the pieces in play and consider how they will interact. No clairvoyance necessary. I see the current state of things, the events that led up to this point, and the multitude of futures spreading out before us. And, most importantly, I see the goal of the one who controls the game board. At the moment, Chancellor Osborne is unmistakably that person. Prince Oliver noticed this as well, and did all he could to stop Osborne's ambitions. But it became clear to me that he never quite understood the extent of the Chancellor's plans. Which is why I started devising some plans of my own. The first was getting the General here to take over as principal of the Thor's branch campus. And the second was claiming the title of Duchess Cayenne and recruiting soldiers to my side behind the scenes. Then, when the Great Twilight broke out, I established the Viceland Army. It is with this very force that I intend to stop Operation Jormungand. Perhaps you could say, they're the dagger I prepared to strike at the heart of the serpent. Muse. I'm finally starting to see what Eusis was talking about. I don't quite understand how, but you really do intend to fight them, don't you?
The Imperial Army has grown to a massive size with the recent draft. It may very well be the largest force ever assembled. An army of a million strong poised to destroy Calvert. Yet you still plan to stand against them? Yes, that's exactly right. <sighs> Are those women we met earlier another part of your plans? The ones affiliated with the Principality of Remaferia and a certain other country. So you ran into them, did you? Must be fate. But you are correct. We invited them here to discuss their cooperation. I imagine they're secretly conferring with their respective countries as we speak. Alright, I'm starting to see what you're after now. Hell of a plan, if you're willing to break a whole bunch of eggs. Even if it goes the way you want, a ton of people are going to lose their lives in the process. True. I estimate it will result in hundreds of thousands of deaths. Though in the worst case scenario, it could be millions. Civilian and soldier alike. So many dead. You're serious about this? I am. At this point, the Imperial Army has gained too much momentum for us to be able to stop it outright. Erebonia was already the greatest military power in Zemiria, and like you said, conscription has only further increased its strength. That's without even factoring in the Panzer Soldats, railway cannons, and airships. It has the advantage in both numbers and technology. What's more, the Chancellor has Ouroboros at his beck and call. And above all else, there's the Great Twilight itself. Its curse removes any chance that those involved in the conflict could grow weary of war. At this early phase, many are able to resist its influence, but that won't last forever. It's only a matter of time until every soul in Erebonia will be able to think of nothing but war. Which is why I presented the other nations an ultimatum. Do nothing, and allow themselves to be swallowed up by the Empire, forever stained by its curse or join me in one final effort to keep the world from ending. Fighting back, no matter the cost. That's what I told those women you met, and it's what I've told everyone else I've been in contact with. <sighs> Just how many countries have you spoken to? Wait. You're telling me you've talked to everyone already? Much like Operation Jormungand itself, my plan is well underway. The bell cannot be unrung. Even if I were to die, the choice to fight or be overtaken would still remain. Now, I'll keep my predictions as to what they will choose to myself. But, humans are foolish and prideful, but they tend to show their true colors and their true strength in times of crisis. In the end, that will be the deciding factor. Unbelievable. <clears throat> I see you're fully prepared to go through with this. Even having predicted the possible fallout. But, Muse, why join us? Hmm? I can see your resolve, and I get what you're trying to do. But what I don't get is why you joined Class 7. What purpose did that serve? If everything you just told us is true, wouldn't it have been more effective for you to stay behind the scenes? And even if enrolling at the branch campus was part of your plan, you didn't need to transfer to Class 7. Wasn't sticking with us through everything that happened in the Grawl an unnecessary risk? I... <laughs> I only did what would benefit me, naturally. How could I resist the chance to get close to the son of the Chancellor, the Ashen Awakener himself? He seemed like he would have some connection to the curse, so I thought that learning more about him would be advantageous in the long run. Of course, it didn't hurt that Instructor Reen is totally my type. Okay, that part I believe. But the rest of that explanation was bullshit. Agreed. That sounds like a job for one of your pieces. As a player, it would be safer for you to stay removed from all this. And that includes you talking to us in person right now. <sighs> when I connected with everyone in the Grawl, I felt a warmth inside you, Muse. Hmm. 
No matter what you might say now, you couldn't have fabricated that. Your feelings toward all of us are genuine. That's the one thing I can say with absolute certainty. Altina. Heh, <laughs> your poker face is starting to crack, Egret. Still, that little trick of yours is something else. You could really give Osborne a run for his money. And this plan you've come up with is probably the best chance anyone has of shutting down the Empire. But... The question is, can you live with yourself afterward? Yeah, you've thought the plan up, but I'm guessing you sure as hell wish there was another way. <sighs> Listen, Muse. You may not think so, but you really are just a regular girl. What? Your friendships with Elise and Alfin, your pride in our class, your major crush on Instructor Reen, they're all part of that. That dirty mind of yours and the way you tease people can be a little annoying, I admit. Still, you're just an ordinary girl who loves sweets, gossip, and all sorts of other regular stuff. Same kind of girl you'd find anywhere. Sure, you may also be a genius who can come up with plans to change the fate of the world, but that's beside the point. There's no way an ordinary girl like you would be okay with a plan that would cost millions of people their lives, is there? <laughs> Aha! Now I see. You wanted us to hear this plan, but you didn't want to go through with it. Because every idea you came up with called for too great a sacrifice. And you were hoping that with Reen and the others, you would find another way. I... I... <laughs> <laughs> Let me put it another way. What do you really want, Muse? I'm not asking future Duchess Mildeen Useleth de whatever. I'm asking Muse Egret, member of Class 7. What do you want to do? Yuna, I... The truth is... I... I... Well, isn't this a touching sight? Those uniforms. They're from the main campus. And isn't that... We meet again, Class 7. Don't try to run. We have you surrounded. Ada... Fritz? And... What's going on? It's been some time, Class 7. How convenient to find all of you in one place. Ah, former instructor Irving. I wish I could say I was surprised to see you on their side. I take it you've chosen to remain with the military then. Receptive as ever, former Principal Le Guin. I have some plans of my own. I've since taken on the position of Field Exercise Supervisor for the Thor's main campus. For your safety, I would advise you all to come quietly. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you, Kurt. How have you been since the Grawl? Your Highness. You're seriously working with the Sanguine Ogre. What the shit is she doing in a Thor's uniform? Oh, you like it? I thought I filled it out nicely. Everyone's here. Just like the Intelligence Division said they would be. The would-be Imperial Assassin, Ash Carbide, and all of his Class 7 accomplices. Even Lady Mildeen, suspected instigator of the recent armed uprisings. 
As a representative of both Thor's and the Imperial family, it is my duty to take you all in. <laughs> Go ahead and try! I'm sorry, but I can't let that happen. What? You think you're hot shit now that you've got some shiny new toys? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. After all, what good is power if you can't exercise it? And right now, you are all powerless to stop me. Especially given that my sniper has a bead on your Rakshasa right now. The Red Constellation's here too? You're not playing around, huh? This whole thing seems a little petty, but whatever. I'm only here to fulfill His Highness's orders. Between the Jaegers and Major Irvin, they've staged a two-pronged offensive. Having to fight my way through both of them and ensure Lady Mildine's safety might prove a tad bothersome. We've set up a perimeter with the Ark Royale and the RMP's anti-aircraft cannons. Trying to escape aboard your landing craft would be suicide. And don't even try bringing out your Panzer Soldats. That will make no difference. You knew about that, huh? He was our instructor, after all. Be that as it may. My friends have shown me a new potential path, and I'm not about to let that slip through my fingers. Do your worst. I, Muse Egret of Class 7, will fight back with everything I've got. Muse. Hell yeah, that's more like it. That's right. This is not where our story ends. Not until we get our instructor back. <sighs> oh, very well. I suppose we'll have to break you before you really understand the position you're in. And we'll do so with the greatest that Thor's Class 1 has to offer. Show us how far you've come since the Grawl. We won't let our history stay our blades. So don't give us anything less than your all. <laughs> Wasn't planning on it, assholes. I hope you're ready, your highness. <laughs> I've been waiting for a chance to cut loose. Brace yourselves. I'm ready. We fight together, everyone! Let's do this, new Class 7! Here I come! Prepare yourselves! You better not disappoint me, okay? Give it your all! You'll need it!
very well. <sighs> I can't believe you've improved this much. <laughs> well, you didn't bore me. I'll give you that. <sighs> what did you expect? Hatchlings have to grow up someday, right? We couldn't afford to lose now. Not to you, your highness. 
As a Vander, I swore my swords to your protection. But now that you've lost your way, I need to protect you from yourself. <laughs> Kurt. <laughs> Fine. Let's see how those swords of yours fare against this! To me! Testarossa! Are you ready for the real battle? So this is the demon that wields a thousand weapons. Your Highness, this is outside the scope of our operation. Seriously? You're whipping it out now? I swear, a little excitement and off you go. Allie, now! Black Shade, release! Do you really think that such puny machines stand a chance against the Divine Knight? What the heck is that? Damn. Thousand Weapons is right. It still has remnants of the Vermilion Apocalypse's power inside it. <sighs> if only we had a Spiegel. <laughs> Funny you should say that. But how? I... just so happened to stumble upon it at Rock Patio. And quietly delivered it to the others for this very contingency. You guys... Looks like it got there okay. Your timing was perfect, Muse. Sandy helped us finish up the repairs. Give them help for us, Kurt! Right. Of course. You really do plan for everything, don't you? Now we can turn the tide! <laughs> so you've got one more piece of junk. What good will that do? You're about to find out! Here we go! Now then, who shall I destroy first? Let's get up there, Mike! What? Very well. Huh. There, it's mine. What? Sure. Hm. It's down. It's mine. Ha! They're mine. Ha! They're mine! What? What? Let's go! Chuck! <laughs> there! It's mine! <laughs> what? I got this! They're uh... <laughs> 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 mine! <laughs> Let's go! There! At once! Yeah! I got it! Huh? It's mine! What? 
Mistral Blade! What? Here I go! You can't escape! Fire! What? Let's get them! They're mine! My turn! Yeah! It's mine! My turn. Yeah! You're mine! Let's go! that enough? No, it's not over yet. <sighs> this is absurd. How could mere pens or soul dots do this? Come on, princey boy. You can do better than that. You do know how much stronger your machine is than theirs, right? You're bringing shame to the Testarossa name. You're so pathetic, I can feel my weapon cringing at you. Surely, now's really not the time. And please, don't call me Princey Boy. Whatever you say, your highness. Ada, Fritz, everyone into the soul dots! They only have three. We'll bring them down through sheer numbers. Your highness. That's going too far. Are you questioning your prince's orders? The Red Constellation, then! What are you waiting for? Capture them! Your Highness! I don't think so! What the? Old Class 7? You made it! Nice work! Are all of you okay? We managed to pinpoint the singularity, so we came to help. Forgive the impropriety, your highness. However, we cannot let your unchivalrous behavior go unchallenged. That's right. We will not stand idle while our fellow Class 7 members are in danger. How did they manage to break through the RMP's perimeter? <sighs> I'll admit their timing's good, but... <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. This makes no difference. Bring everyone you like. It won't change. <laughs> oh. 
Are you quite sure about that? Isn't that... It was here this whole time? The Pantagruel! Impossible! Where did it come from? That was some truly impressive cloaking. Well done, Miss Witch. You ask the impossible, and I deliver. Hello, Your Highness. You've gotten taller since we last met. Major, Ogre, how have you been? Our side's ready to fight at any time. Are you? <laughs> That's one way to turn the tables! Prince Cedric, I hate to admit this, but we don't have the power to deal with their forces as it stands. I suggest we make a strategic retreat. <sighs> Very well, Major. Send word to all main campus students. Kurt. Class 7, crew of the Pantagruel, this round goes to you. But I will not allow this insult to go unavenged. I promise you that. Main campus students, withdraw! Y yes, yes, sir! sir. That means us too, Gareth. Right. These Class 7 reunions are never uneventful. Still, it's good to see you all again. It would appear you are the same as ever, Vida. Correct. It simply took me a while to get a grasp on the spirit veins over there. Emma's not the only one with grievances to air, Vida, but we have more pressing matters to attend to. Wouldn't you lot agree? The 
profusion of pleroma grass should be proof enough. Hurry and drive the stake into it. Then I, Muse Egret, will happily return to Class 7. Thank you, all of you, for helping me find my way back.
吗？Looks like you went up a rank. Here's a little treat on me. Nice work, troops. I know it ain't easy.